start to death, or to the full body, and then host it to just why I'm having our help. So I started it, and somehow I lost it halfway through. But you were here, you were helping. You've got your legs, you've got your arms, you've got your full body intact. Give all the promises. Tell him how much you love him. Thank you for everything. I feel like you don't have anything to think about, but thank you for this church. Thank you for everyone who is here.
Shake before the surging sea. There is a river whose streams shall make that the city of God, the only place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God lives within, it cannot be moved. God rescues it at the break of dawn. The nations raise the kingdom where removed, the waters were and melted. The Lord who commands armies. Is on our side. The God of Jacob is our protector. Come, behold the words of the Lord, who has made the nation in the earth. He brings an end to wars throughout the earth. He shatters the bows and breaks the spears. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And this is the one that I love so much. I'm going to take it together. I want to go to the Lord of Holy Spirit. I want to take two so sing that last verse again. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of Holy Spirit is me. The Lord of the Lord of is with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. Turn that to a prayer point, Father. That's my prayer this morning. The Lord of hosts is with me. Is with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. The God of Jacob is my refuge. The God of Jacob is my refuge. Father, please make the proclamation this morning. The Lord of hosts is with me. The Lord of angels are is with me. The God of the angels are with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. The God of Jacob is my protector. The Lord of Jacob is my protector. Is my strength. Father Lord, we thank you once again. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you once again this morning for the worship, for the prayers, for the praise, for the songs. And we thank you because you are our refuge and strength. We thank you because you are with us. Thank you once again. We declare the service open in the name of God the Father. 
We declare it open in the name of God the Son. We declare it open in the name of God the Holy Spirit. A big clap to Jesus. Hallelujah. On the hymn, right? Yes. in spiritual songs with grace in our hearts. Colossians 3.16 So with the grace of God in our hearts, we're going to sing the of ages with understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. Choir, thank you so much for that wonderful worship. Yeah. You know, you, you made us, transported us from this realm to the realm, you know, to the realm of, the, of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So shall we just have that in that same vein and then sing rock of ages to God. Hallelujah. Quiet, please. Thank you.
Bible says it is a blessed thing to give than to receive. It's a blessing to give than to receive. And the Bible says, out of your substance, bring that which you have prepared for the Lord. The psalmist says, I will not go. David says, I will not go before the house. I won't go into the house of the Lord. What? Empty. And so I believe we didn't come here empty. I believe we are here to be blessed of God. And I believe God has something special for each and every one of us. So I would like us to bring out that tangible thing we have prepared for the Lord. I want you to bring it out and give one to the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Fire, please. And those of us that are giving online, um, the the address, I mean, the account number of the church is is RCCG Harvest Fellowship, Harvest Fellowship Church, Rugby. The bank is Barclays Bank, and the account number is seven three zero. 88561. Take that again. The account number is 7308-8561. And the sort code is 207348. I take the sort code again. It's 207348. And the bank is Barclays Bank. ROCCG Harvest Fellowship Church. Rugby. And as we give, remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. appreciate you God for your goodness in their lives oh Lord. Pray Father Lord even as we have given out this offering that Lord will in return you bless us Lord in the name of Jesus. The word, the word of God says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures press down shaking together running over shall men running over shall men give unto you. It says out that which we, what we have that we've given unto Lord the Lord is going to we are more than able to replenish that thing unto us oh God. That we have given out of our abundance, out of that which you have given to us, we have given it unto you, Lord. We pray you will bless us in abundance in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I pray for as many God that doesn't even have enough to give unto you, that Lord, you bless them as well, Lord, in the name of Amen. Jesus. We shall not lack, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those of us have brought out our tithes, O Lord, have brought out our tithes, O God, before you, O Lord. We pray, Lord, that you bless us as well in the name of Amen. Jesus. The Lord says, you open the windows of heaven, you release blessings upon us, and there shall not be room enough to receive those blessings that you shall release upon us. Amen. But I Lord, even as we have been obedient to your word, giving out our tithes, O Lord, unto you, Lord. We pray, God, that, Lord, you fulfill your word in our lives, O Lord, in the name of Amen. Jesus. Bless the work of our hands, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless anything we lay our hands, O God. Cause us to prosper, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Heal our lands as well, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. Bless every your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here I am, send me as you sit down. If you think you left your sword. You. <laughs> Here I am, send me. 
that you have been speaking to us through the purpose-driven life. Lest you're preparing a life, Lord, to go for you. Lest you're preparing a life to have impact for you. Lord, we are not hopefully foolish, so we don't just think that we're just on this journey for nothing. Lord, we realize that this is a journey that you're taking us on because you want to use us, because you want our lives to be relevant because you want our lives to make impact in our generation. Because, oh God, you want us to fulfill the purpose for which you have created us. Because, Lord, you want us, oh God, to be the people that you have called us to be. Because you want us, Father God, to be fulfilled in life. Because you want us, Father God, to do that for which you have called us. Because, Lord, you don't want us to be put aside. Because, Father God, you want us to be able to respond to you even as you stretch out your hands to us. So, Father, we ask that as we go through this month, Lord, you will help us, oh God, to have that sensitivity to you and to your work. Yes, that means, Lord God, that we will glean from all that you are saying. Lord, that our hearts will receive, that our spirit will be saturated, and that, Lord God, the excitement of the Holy Ghost, the zeal of the Lord, will cause their oh Lord God, to come a performance in us, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we bless you. This morning, we are asking that you speak to us again. Lord, encourage us from your own word. Holy Spirit, we hide ourselves in you this day. We say, you speak. Let us, your people, hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. You are welcome to the house of the Lord again this morning in the name of Jesus. It's awesome to see your faces. Praise the Lord. I'm a giver. So happy to see you. Amen and amen. You know I will say something. Never not do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, you know, I have been eating the work. I hope you have been eating that book. You know, I have a father in the Lord who, who says to me that an elephant is easy to eat if you eat it a little at a time. If you eat it mouthful by mouthful, praise the Lord. And I feel that those daily readings have been good little mouthfuls that we can kind of put into our day that will not disrupt anything and that will not mean we leave anything out. Amen. So I think the teenagers are being asked to come. Okay, please go. God bless you. God bless you, everyone that's going. The Lord go with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I titled my message this morning, A Life of Purpose and Impact. A Life of Purpose and Impact. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, I always like to define what, where I'm going. So, A Life of Purpose and Impact, we're on this purpose-driven journey right now. And impact is the action of one object that comes forcibly into contact with another. Forcibly. Hallelujah. So, son, 
Come and come forcibly. Let, let me have your hand. Come, come and come forcibly against my hand. Come forcibly. Force, force. That means we are coming from a distance. See this distance I'm coming from to yours. You come from that distance too. Like this. Okay. Forcibly. We must collide. Oh yeah. Let's do it again. Come on. We collide. Yes. Impact. When we meet, there is impact. One object comes forcibly in contact with another one. So, if there is an action. It's the, it, another, another dictionary meaning says, it is the influence of an action on something or someone. So, an action must happen for there to be impact. Uh, impact doesn't happen where we are sitting down. Impact happens when you take an action. And that action will influence something or someone. So an action that does not influence, now of course, you know that an action can influence positively or negatively, but it must influence the thing. Praise the Lord. So in this month, we are in the process of understanding purpose. And Brother Chiki is going to tell us when he does the announcements in the minute that, you know, on Wednesdays we have been meeting. This is the third Wednesday of the Purpose Driven Studies. And I want to say to you that if you haven't been joining, it's not too late yet. It's not too late. I believe that by the end of this message this morning, you will understand why you need to join those Bible study sessions. Why you need to find out your purpose and to fulfill it. Amen. God is going to help us. We will do that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, uh, uh, my question is, why is it important for us to understand our purpose? Why? Last week we talked about the fact that we're in the 10th month, and so we're in the 10th month of when our destiny, our lives are going to show forth in the name of Jesus above any kind of waters of adversity. But why is it important for us? It is important because God's ultimate desire for you and I is that we would make impact in our generation. That's his ultimate desire for you and I. That's the reason why he sent you and I here. In fact, you know, some of us believe, and I always say it, those who have been under my administration for quite a while will tell you that I always say it, that you are not in the United Kingdom because you decided to come to the UK. No, you're not here. Many people decided to come. It is not given to them to be here. They're still deciding to come. They have not been able to. Praise the Lord. That God made it possible for you to come. It's because he had a purpose for you to fulfill in this place. And what a tragedy it would be if we were not to fulfill God's ultimate purpose for us. Praise the Lord. And his purpose for us, the reason he sent us is that we would impact our world for him in our generation. That we would be agents of change in our world for him in our generation. But the truth is, without understanding and without knowing what we're trying to do, we will not fulfill our purpose and then we cannot make impact. Because let me tell you this, if you don't know your purpose, you will live a very enjoyable life. Oh yes, some people are living a great life. The truth is, they're not living a fulfilling life. Elder, are you going to preach? Okay, then stop talking. If they're not fulfilling purpose, they're just living. They're just living. They're having a great time. They make a lot of money. Yeah. But they are just existing. They are not living a fulfilled life. Praise the Lord. Because in order that we will live a fulfilled life, we are going to have to fulfill our purpose. And our purpose is the manufacturer's uh, reason for designing us. Let me give you an example of a guy. As I was preparing this message, the Lord gave me a, an interesting example. And that example was the example of a car. He said to me, you know, what, let's imagine, for example, Jaguar cars. You know Jaguar cars? Jaguar makes a car. And they create this exclusive model, a one of its kind, because you are one of your kind. There's no other person like you. So Jaguar creates this exclusive model. And they create it for the purpose of carrying the new king. So they say, what we want this car to do is we want to create it to bring King Charles to the Midlands. That's the purpose they created, that exclusive model of Jaguar. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But then instead of bringing King Charles to the Midlands, somebody, for some reason, takes that car and goes and packs it with rubbish. 
So they pack it with garbage. This car, they say, ah, no, no, somebody, this was a mistake. There's no other design like this. What, what are we going to call this Jaguar? This is, remember, it's an exclusive design. So it's not an XJ6 or, or XJS or whatever else the XJs are. It's just a creation of its own type. The person says, this is, this is not normal. So this has to be rubbish. They pack it with garbage and rubbish. And the result is that that car is set aside, it is forgotten, it is unfulfilled, and it is not used for the ultimate purpose because it never fulfilled its divine purpose. Praise the Lord. I pray for you this morning that you will find your purpose, you will understand it, and you will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that you will not be set aside in any way. I pray for you that you will not miss your mark in purpose. I pray for you that you will discover your purpose, you will fulfill it. I pray for you that you will be excited to fulfill the purpose for which God made you and brought you to this UK in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Let's have a look at scriptures very quickly. Genesis 2 7. Hallelujah. The Bible says in that scripture, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. God breathed into you, into you, into your nostrils. He breathed his breath. And he made us to be a living being. And he did that for a purpose, for his own divine reason. Praise the Lord. God did, he doesn't do anything uh, 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 for nothing. He doesn't do anything with uh, God is a purposeful God. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, in that book, God tells Jeremiah that, listen, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, Jeremiah 1 5. God tells Jeremiah in that scripture, says, look, I formed you, before I formed you, in your mother's womb, I knew you. He says, and I already have plans, for, I'm paraphrasing, and I already had plans for you. Amen. I have a plan for you that you're going to speak for me in the nations of the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. These were God's holy plans for this guy. So he tells him, my creating you in your mother's womb is not a mistake. It's not a chance. Some things happen by chance. Praise the Lord. As I was coming from the Coventry House Fellowship yesterday, by chance I called my, I, it wasn't planned, by chance I called my uh, cousin's wife. Because this, my cousin, is very close and we grew up together. And I knew that his birthday would be in October. So by chance, I called his wife and said, he doesn't use WhatsApp. So you can't get him on WhatsApp. In fact, I don't know if I know his phone number, but I, you can always find his wife. So I said, when is my, my cousin's birthday? She said, it's tomorrow. It was just by chance. But even in that chance, you know, God used it for a purpose for me. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that the God who can take chance and make purpose out of it did not create you by chance. Therefore, there is a purpose that you must fulfill. Praise the Lord. God has made you for that particular purpose. And that purpose is that in your lifetime, you must make impacts. You must live a fulfilling life. You must embark on God's holy plan for you. Praise God. Amen. And the truth of the matter is that really, you know, we have no excuse for not living a life of impact in our generation. Why? Because there is work to be done on every level, in every area. Here we are in this time of our lives, in this world. Our situation is a strange one because things are changing. The world is changing around us. And we have no control over it. You can't do anything about the fact that energy prices is going to rise. Because you can't do anything about the fact that uh, the guy in Russia has already bombed uh, Ukraine. So you can't do anything about the fact that, you know, sanctions are being uh, levied against him. Which means that, you know, he's withdrawing his oil. And people are it's affecting us. You can't do anything about that. You don't have control over that situation. Amen. But what we have control over is to find the purpose of God for us, for our lives, and to fulfill that purpose. That's one we have control over. We have no reason for not fulfilling purpose in God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to tell yourself this morning, I have no reason for not fulfilling purpose in God. You're going to help me open that door because I realize that we need to be warm, but it gets too warm, we start getting drowsy. So please, help me to open that door. We need some air. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there is no purpose, no reason for us to not to fulfill purpose. 
Now, in Jeremiah 29, 11, God even encourages us. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, Almighty God encourages us. says, look, you that I found, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. And then he goes on to tell us the plans. He says, look, it's not even an ordinary plan. It's a plan not for your ill, not for evil for you, but a plan to do you good. A plan, my plan is not to harm you. My plan is to bless you. My plan is not to delay you. My plan is to ensure that you get to your expected end. Hallelujah. My plan is to ensure that you make it to the place where I formed you. Praise the Lord. If, uh, if uh, the, 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 yes, thank you, Tolu, thank you. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil. Look, to give you an expected end. Another version says, to take you to your expected end. Hallelujah. To fo- your, what is your expected end? Just from what we have been reading and learning, what is your expected end? That you will fulfill God's purpose for you on this earth. Hallelujah. Now, so it means that anybody who does not fulfill God's purpose has not reached their expected end. The scripture has not been fulfilled in their life. Hallelujah. Means that scripture is waiting. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 43, 21 says, we are formed for him. Because our lives are to declare his praise. Let's go to that scripture in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. Isaiah 43, 21. I'll put all of this together in a minute. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 21, that God has formed us. He calls us these people. I have formed for myself that they should declare my praise. Praise the Lord. God formed you for himself that your life should declare his praise can I tell you a secret this morning a life I don't care how beautiful that life looks to us on the outside here doesn't matter how great and how many cars that life has or how many buildings that life is able to put together the truth of it is that if that life has not fulfilled God's purpose they have not declared his praise and therefore, they have missed out on what God formed them for, what God brought them here for. Praise the Lord. So there are people in our experience who are going to be looking great, looking good. But I can promise you, go and ask them, they are unfulfilled. Why? Because they are, they are unsatisfied. Why? Because they have not discovered the reason for which God sent them to the face of the earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. The only way to fulfill purpose the only way to end, uh, get to that ultimate goal in life as children of God is that our lives should bring glory to God. The only way our lives can bring glory to God is that we fulfill the manufacturer's plan for the design that he has made in you and I. Praise the Lord. Anything less does not bring him glory. Can I hear you say anything less does not bring him glory? Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to read the book and encourage you to come to Bible study and share your thoughts. Let me tell you something. Those who go from these lessons to go ahead and to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives, let's watch them in a year's time. You're going to see the difference. Let's watch them in five years time. You're going to see the difference because they found the reason for which the manufacturer of the bag made the bag and they don't carry in their bag sand. They carry in their bag the purpose for which the bag was created. Hallelujah. So I thought whatever the situation you find yourself in, whatever the excuse you have no excuse for not fulfilling your God-given destiny. You have no excuse for not attaining to God's holy goals for your life. Because the God's holy goals for your life, be it your ministry, which there will be part of it, or your career, must glorify God. So today, we want to look at an example. I always think that it's a good example, a good thing to look at an example of a life who, that went through all kinds of things, thick and thin, you know, but yet fulfilled Filled his destiny. Praise the Lord. And for me, I find such a life in the life of Joseph. And so, I'm going to make Joseph my example this morning. Amen. So, I want you to turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, verses, I'll read verses 3 to 11 of that scripture. I'm going to take it, you know, in bits as I go. I'm tracing his life, essentially, and trying to draw out from that the lessons that we need to learn. Amen. Genesis chapter 37, and I would want to look at verse, verse 3. 
and then all the way up to verse 11. The Bible says there, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Hear my dream. He tells them his dream that there was a verse 7 that we were binding sheep in the field then behold my sheep arose and stood upright and indeed your sheep stood all round and bowed to my sheep essentially telling them they're going to bow to him and his brother said to him you think you're going to reign over us but you think indeed you're going to have dominion over us and the Bible says they hated him even more mm. then he dreamed still another dream and he told it to them and this time he said even the sun and the moon including the eleven stars were bowing down to him so his father, they told his father and the father rebuked him and said, what kind of dream are you doing? Are you saying your mother and I will bow down to you, unto the earth before you? And his brothers envied him even the more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Joseph was hated. Joseph was loved and was hated. His mother loved him. His father loved him to distraction, gave him a coat. His brothers hated him because his life had a destiny. And the fact that he revealed the future to God, revealed his future to him. God showed Joseph what his future would be. Like he wants to reveal your purpose to you. God showed Joseph what his purpose is. Beloved, if you have not yet had an encounter with God, where he opens your eyes to see him, let me tell you something. He needs to open your eyes to see your purpose. Don't follow after that which is not your purpose. Don't follow after somebody else's. Don't look at somebody else's life and say, I want to be like them. I want to be like that person. Because the truth is, that human being may not be fulfilling their own purpose. And they may be. But are you sure what they're doing is God's purpose for you? Are you sure the way they're going is God's purpose for you? Do you know that Joseph didn't do anything he didn't do anything for his brothers to envy him. He just shared his dream. And do you know that he did not know they envied him? He was, he did not know they envied him. Do you think that if he knew they envied him, you know, he would have told them the second dream again? But the truth is, Joseph paid the price. He paid the price for that envy. He paid the price for knowing and sharing that dream. Verse 12 to verse 36 of that scripture. Let's do a quick Bible study. Verse 12 to verse 36. Bible says, um, then his brothers went to feed their flocks in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Even the father didn't know that they hated him. Are they not feeding the flock in Shechem? Come on, I will send you to them. He said, Here I am. And Joseph, Joseph said, Come on, send me. And he says, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers. His father was seeking after their wellness. And he sent Joseph to seek after their wellness. And you know the story. They say that, you know, they, they, they found a certain man. When they saw him, they sent, when, then he said to him, please go and see. And, and so he sent him off to the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him and then was wandering in the field. And man said to him, what are you seeking? He said, I'm seeking my brothers. But man said, look, they are feeding their flock. And the man said, look, they've departed from here. So Joseph goes on to Dothan after them. And then the brothers, verse 18, they saw him from afar, even before he came near them. And they conspired their brother against him to kill him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> have you perceived something in your own family or amongst your friends towards you that makes you keep quiet when God has sent you to be a mouthpiece to them? Is there something that you have perceived? Have you? Joseph didn't know they hated him. But maybe you do. Maybe you have seen that, you know, in my family, amongst my friends, when I open my mouth to give my testimony because you are fulfilling God's purpose or you are seeking God's purpose and he is doing you good, when you open your mouth to testify, you know, you're not exactly regarded highly for it. You know, people don't exactly, they say, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. we've heard. Okay. Then, and then you decide that you are not going to speak again. And maybe God has sent you as a prophet to them, look, the Bible says that in spite of the envy, the envy of his brothers and the hatred of his brothers cost Joseph time. It cost him time. But can I tell you that in God's agenda, that was not wasted time. Hallelujah. We know his story. 
we know that he went on even from that point. We know that in spite of being a slave, we know that in spite of being put in the, in, the, in the pit to die, somebody found him and rescued him. What is my point? My point is this, that as you set about your journey to find your purpose and to fulfill it, you are going to come across dangers. You are going to come across terrible impossibilities sometimes. How does a man get out of a cave where they put him if somebody else had not found him there? If a brother had not thought, if I kill this guy, his father is going to die. So let me just pretend. Let me just pick him up from here, hide him, sell him into slavery. The guy who sold him into slavery, did you know that that guy was following to fulfill God's purpose in the life of Joseph? The guy who rescued him, the others wanted him to die there. Then he was supposed to die. But the God of purpose said it's not time yet. I prophesy over your life this morning. Whatever is threatening your future, threatening your life, threatening your existence, threatening your health, the God of purpose says it's not your time yet. You are not going to die before your time in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has plotted for you, you are going to escape in the mighty name of Jesus. God will send you somebody who will help you. Somebody who will rescue you and cause you to survive the onslaught of the enemy in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will receive grace this morning to fulfill your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's go on and see because it's good for us to learn from this guy. So then he went into bondage in slavery. Genesis chapter 39. If you read from verses 1 to 10, you will see that. You will see, and in fact, when you read Genesis 39, verses 1 to 10, let's just, let's just, let me open it so that I can talk appropriately. You see that now, Joseph is a slave in Potiphar's house. When you read that scripture, you could almost weep for Joseph. You say, ha, ah, ah, ah. the man who has father and mother like this, how did he end up in slavery? Did you know that he was on the journey of fulfilling God's purpose for him in that place? In that slavery, not where he's supposed to be. In my language, they'll say the child of somebody who has houses and who has roads and land. How, what is he doing in slavery? So you will think you will feel pity for him. But the truth of the matter is that he was fulfilling God's purpose for him even there. Do you know that Joseph was in slavery? Yes, the man put him over his household. The man made him master of all that he had. Bible says the only thing he kept away from Joseph was his wife. You think that because you are here in the UK and things are not working out for you just yet, that maybe you are out of God's will or God's purpose and sometimes we're in a terrible hurry to make things happen for us. I'm not sure how Joseph could have hurried up slavery or what happened to him next. We're in a terrible hurry to make things happen because we are in the UK and then we may begin to think that now that I'm in UK, I've got to take every opportunity now that I'm here, this is but God has a plan in purpose for you Hallelujah! Yeah. don't jump ahead of God don't move ahead of him don't seek the things that will actually bring grief and perdition into your life because there is a time for everything Ecclesiastes chapter 3 there is a time for everything. I pray that we will move with God's time in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So even though he was enslaved, he was taken away from his father and his mother, yet he went ahead and he put his hand to work. What is it that would have made that guy to be put at the head of that household? Because where he found himself, he worked hard. He was diligent. He was faithful. He was honest. He showed himself as the one who could rule in that place, who could be head. He did what he was asked to do. He didn't sit in one corner moaning, bemoaning his face. Ah, you don't know where I come from. You don't know who I was in my father's house. If you had known who I was, you would not be giving me this kind of job. No. He went ahead and did what he had to do. Fulfilled all the purpose of God for him because he realized that where he was, somehow it was God that had got him there. Amen. Genesis chapter 39 verse 3 What does 39 3? 39 it says And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Praise the Lord. Because he kept on doing what he should and God Almighty who knew his plan for him Bible says he strengthened his hand. He gave his hand excellence even in that menial job that he was doing in Potiphar's house. 
God gave his hand excellence. Beloved, let me tell you something. On your road to destiny, you need to follow after God's direction. I don't know what that constraining situation is that you find yourself because you know you are more than this. I want to encourage you, you are more than this. But your time is coming. There is a timing in God for everything. You must be diligent where you find yourself. You must be hardworking where you find yourself. You must stretch where you find yourself. Hallelujah. You must fulfill God's purpose for that time, in that season, in that place. Amen. Because you cannot jump over process. You cannot jump over God's timing. You are going to need to stick in God's timing. Fulfill what he asks you to do at that time in order to move to your next stage ahead. Hallelujah. This is God's order in things. This is his way of causing you to gloriously come to your expected end. I pray for us that we will all come to our expected end in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, it may be that you are in a place where you feel helpless. And you feel that maybe it's in some sort of bondage. My word, if I was not in this position, I know what I would be. I want you to make up your mind to do your best in that place. Put your best effort into that thing. Praise the Lord. Verse 6 says, This man left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. And Joseph was just a slave. He didn't know what he had. Joseph was in control. Was in control. Even in slavery. Uh, wherever you are, you can be in control. My God will make you like Joseph in the name of Jesus. Amen. You'll be faithful there. They will recognize your faithfulness. Amen. Let me tell you something. Beloved, a person who doesn't grumble, who just goes ahead and does it because they know that they are biding their time near. They know that this is not it. They know this is not where they're going. They know they have not come to their expected end. They know they have not reached their goal. But in that place where they are, they refuse to gamble. They refuse to cut corners. They refuse to do other than they are asked to do. They are faithful in it. They are, they are diligent in it. They do it with as much zeal as if it belongs to them. Come and see how God honors those people. I have a, 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 the chairman of our um, uh, board of trustees is my, my younger brother. His name is Pastor Yemila Dipo. Whenever uh, we have new uh, people in the office. I, I go to, he learns from me and I learn from me. I learn a lot from him. Whenever we want to reset the office up, you know, I, I talk to him, Pastor, talk to him. We, we share ideas. When PD and PD2 came, I said to him, Pastor Adipo, I need to set up the office better than even what Pastor Steve did. My husband was the chief administrator of Harvest Fellowship and he everything is in place. We actually have pro formers and forms and templates of everything. But, you know, I don't have time to put the whole thing together. And when PD and P2 were coming, I said, okay, Pastor Ladipo, I need your help in this. So we went up to Bristol, where his church is. And in his church, we found a whole staff. Am I lying? They must be about maybe 15 of them welcomed us that day. So they showed us this system, showed us that system, uh, made food for us, uh, showed us the video of their development, blah, blah, blah. I said, Pastor, the people who did this thing for you, I need them all. He said, Pastor Morola, let me tell you a lie. He said, there is none of this that I paid anybody to do. He said, all these guys are volunteers. These are volunteers from the church, he said. He said, you are lying. I said, he said, I don't have anyone I pay in this office. All these are volunteers. They're master students who are part of the church. Some of them are degree students who are part of the church. And they come on a Tuesday because that's when we open the office just to give their time. They just give their time and they give their skills to help the church progress. I said, really? He said, so I started to pray. Then I, he said, but Pastor Mola, I will tell you when the manifestation comes. He said, because this happens to us every year. Last week, I think it was, I was talking to him about something. He said, uh, every one of them, every one of them finished their degrees excellently. And now every one of them has a job that gives them sponsorship. Ah, uh, I said, he said, Pastor, that is our story. Every year, I said, I change staff. And he said, they come, they work, they do it. It's everything you see. It's them. It's what I don't pay for it. I mean, of course, I pay for the equipment, the, the microphone, the thing. But the workmanship is not paid for. It's these guys that do it. 
He said, and God, the, my assurance is, and he used his hand to beat his chest. He said, my assurance is my God is always faithful to them. Hallelujah. Beloved, learn from the life of Joseph. Joseph, he didn't, he didn't even volunteer his time. He had to do it. He was a slave. Nobody paid him a penny. He was in slavery. So it wasn't that he could demand a wage. Or even demand the hours he works. What? If they say you are working 24 hours, you are working 24 hours. But the Bible says he did it so diligently. This guy left everything to him. He said, you take, just, just let me eat. And then my wife is the one you cannot touch. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that you need to do. Whatever constraint or bondage or inability is not allowing you to be what you want to be for Christ. It will move in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we learn from Joseph. We put, he put his hand to it. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 9. Let's look. God pros promised to prosper our work. Deuteronomy 39. Let's have a quick look at it. Because the, God, the same God that did it for this guy. He is waiting for us. He is wanting to do our own too. 39. The Bible says, And the Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hands, in the fruit of your body. I thought somebody would be saying amen. amen. In the increase of your livestock, amen. and in the produce of your land for good. Amen. For the Lord will again rejoice over you amen. for good, amen. as he rejoiced over your father. Amen. So shall be your testimony amen. in the name of Jesus. No matter what your situation, this amen. afternoon receive grace amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive grace to find and fulfill purpose. Amen. Praise the Lord. I must rush. Okay, I'm almost there. Praise God. I want to finish it. Number three, even when you are unjustly treated and unjustly accused, come on, Genesis chapter 39, you will find Joseph there. Genesis 39, 14 to 20. He was unjustly accused, was he not? The Potiphar's wife not pretend that he was one chasing after her. And then all his largesse, you'd have thought, now what is the use of all of his hard work? <laughs> the Bible says he was again thrown into prison. As he were, and in the deepest part of the prison, so the guy was like, don't let him see the light of day again. Throw him in the deepest, deepest part of the prison. So, again, unjustly treated, unjustly accused. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Something he didn't do. But do you know what? Even there, he made impact. Even in that place, in that situation. I mean, you are wrongly accused. Hey, I didn't do it. Oh, many of us, we want to defend ourselves very quickly. I didn't do it. What are you talking about? We want to, our right, especially in this UK. May the Lord defend us from UK. We want to claim our right. It's my right. There are some things you just leave alone. Just leave it alone. You talk to Almighty God. Say, Father, use this thing to remove every kind of shame, lack, rubbish from my life. In the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, let this one come and ask my forgiveness. I don't know, it can be, can be three years, but they will come back. They will come back because they will see the glory of God upon your life. Now look at what's happening here. So the Bible says that he was made, put in prison. But verses 22, 23, he became the head of prisoners. I thought, come and look at this guy. I mean, <laughs> you are in prison, head, or head prisoner. Who wants to be head prisoner? But he was tracing destiny. Bible says he became the head of the prisoners. And then right there in prison, right there in prison, while he was doing everything he could do, while he was acting as the seer, where he was counseling them, while he was taking everything he could do, he will move the chair. He will make sure the people who are sick are fed. He will make sure that water is given to the jailer. He will, he, he no, no, we, 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 may the Lord help us. Human beings we, in prison. <laughs> Well, you have no control over the thing. No, Joseph just put his hand to work. And the Bible says, one day, he served the, even his giftings, he put everything, he put himself on the line. His giftings, his abilities, his qualifications, his intelligence, his skills, his knowledge in God. He put them all there and said, come on, let's use them. So that when those people had a dream, they came looking for Joseph. And it was Joseph that interpreted their dream for them. What if he had said in prison, I will interpret dream. My friend, go and sit down. If you don't know your dream, that's your problem. Go and sit down. What would have happened to him? Would the guy have found out that he could tell the meaning of dreams? Would the guy who finally remembered him and told And even then, he was forgotten. 
Let me tell you something, beloved. God didn't promise you a bed of roses. He says in the world you will see trouble, but be of good cheer. Because even that world I have overcome it. That's what he said. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if God told you that there will be situations you have to overcome, and when the situations come, you are fighting the battle yourself. You are just saying, I work that. It's not me, it's me. All right. You're going to be there a long time. This is not, I'm not sending any word to anybody. But it's the truth. Because while you are fighting your own battle, God cannot fight for you. Why don't we allow God to fight for us? Because when God fights for you, you are a definite winner. A definite what? Yeah. Winner. So, Joseph won. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when he came to Genesis 41 to 23, again, his purpose became evident. Because the Bible says he told the future, even in that place. So whatever is happening to you, someone is treating you unjustly, learn from Joseph this afternoon. Put your all and in all into it. Praise God. Do you know that in the United Kingdom, there's not much to do except work? Does it, am, I, am I telling the truth? There's not much to do except work. Work, you go to do work. And here, you can't dodge the thing. Praise God. So, and you can't give, make many excuses. So, when I'm supposed to be at uh, Africa Missions Global Conference. I'm going to go. I don't know whether I should say this online, but I will say it, yeah. The I will go because I'm the coordinator for Africa Missions for my region. So, I have to go. And in any case, I'm mother in the Lord. If I'm not, that she will ask for me by name. So, but I am free teaching on Thursday. I'm lecturing on, on Wednesday. I have, I have a full day of lecturing on Wednesday. I also have lectures on Thursday. I also have an appraisal on, on Wednesday morning. So I'm sitting there and I cannot lie. Amen. Right. So, and I'm going to do my father's work. So what do you do? But you have to work. So I, Chakaribo, Sokotaka, Muskatari, Muskatari, Boriaka. So I talked to my line manager. I said, I need to shift this Wednesday work because I'm not going to be around. Can I teach it online? They, we don't do online teaching anymore. But I, I'm telling you this so you know that God answers prayer. And he sees your heart. He sees your heart too. Hmm. So I said, I can't. I need to train, teach this thing online. She said, you know, we're not allowed to do teachings online. I said, moreover, it's not just one. I'll do this one online in the morning. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to do that one online also. And then I said, next week, I'm not even here. So I'm going to need to schedule the thing. She said, well, what? She said, but let me talk to somebody. I, all the time, I was just saying, Father, you know where I have to be. You know what's happening. You know I have to make both of them work. She sent me an email. Oh, that's fine. You go ahead and do the online. They, I'm the only one. <laughs> right now, that's going to, at least I'll do it this next week. I'll do online lecture. God sees your heart. Serve him, eh? Serve him. The reason that I know that you have to is because everything else, and I mean everything else, that you can never provide supply for yourself, he will make it available for you. He will cause everything to work together for your good. I mean everything will work together for your good. He said, I have tested it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And I hear testimonies of other people too. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I know that it's difficult. It's not easy. It's not easy, but I know we know who we have to do with, don't we? We know this is God we have to do with, the maker of heaven and earth. And that's what Joseph did. He just made sure that as far as it was concerning him, he put his hand to do what God had for him. Amen. We also will do so and will receive the help that we need in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you receive grace today in the name of Amen. Jesus Amen. to bypass all that, everything that is hindering or that will not allow you, by, you bypass it in Jesus' name Amen. and you make impact, you fulfill Amen. destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, number four, even when you have helped other people and they forget you, because you know, it's commonly known in Christian circles that, you know, it's the people you help the most that are going to harm you the most. And you pour your life into somebody, into things, and somebody, later on, they just turn around and they afflict you or they forget about you. Even if that's the situation, I want to encourage you this afternoon, don't worry. Don't worry you. 
you are not alone. Take heart. Make up your mind that God will help you because you will fulfill destiny. You will make impact in the name of Jesus. Did, did, did it not happen to Joseph? Remember those two men? The guy who poured wine for the king in Genesis 40, 23 to 41 and then on to 46. The one who, who, who poured wine for the king and the one who brought king bread. They dreamt now, the, the bread man dreamt that something carried the bread off the basket. The wine man uh, found himself, you know, crushing grapes for the king, putting the cup in the king's hand. And Joseph told them, you, you are going to die. <laughs> you, you are going to be restored. Praise the Lord. And that's exactly what happened. God did fulfill his word. Joseph made it in spite of their forgetting because the guy who carries wine to the king he completely forgot about Joseph. The Bible says he forgot about him. When things were good for him again, <laughs> he didn't remember the guy. Then one day, Pharaoh dreamt and nobody could give him the interpretation of the dream. God will remember you. Lift up your hands. God will remember me. By any means, Father, remember me in the name of Jesus. Doesn't matter whether the world has forgotten me, whether those I helped have forgotten me. Lord, remember me in your mercy, in your righteousness. Remember me in the name of Jesus. Against all odds, remember me. Cause somebody to lose their sleep so that you can, oh, so that I am remembered. Cause somebody, Lord, to lose their, miss their way so that I am remembered. Just remember me, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will remember you in Jesus' mighty name. And you know the story? You know what happened there? That all that happened was that the guy could, nobody could interpret it. The guy said, ah, I don't know, maybe it's three years or something. Ah, there was a guy in prison. And he will still be there because nobody rescues them from Pharaoh's prison. Ah, oh yes, he told me my dream. Now the guy has been giving the king his cup. Do you know that the cup bearer of the king is a very important position? It's like, the, it's like the queen's dresser who's with her all the time. The butler, the guy who gives him his drink, gives him his food. This guy is so important because he has to taste the drink before he will give it to Pharaoh, just in case it's poisoned. Mm -hmm. Because who can poison Pharaoh? It can only be that guy now. <laughs> Maybe another guy who's carrying his drink. So he has to taste it. And so because his life is in peril also, you know, he has a very prominent position. He's looked after. <laughs> He's like next to the king. Like that lady was the queen. And then he remembered. So the king will listen to him in the name that is above every other name. Those who will speak and on your behalf and they will listen to, they will remember you yeah. in yeah. the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Those who God has positioned to speak your name so that you are remembered, you are called upon. They will remember you yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. They will not forget about you. Anyway, what happened here so that we can go and quickly pray? is that Joseph was remembered and called. Hey, praise the Lord. He was busy fulfilling his purpose. He made his impact and his impact was felt all around the world. You know this story. You know that his brothers are, all came and bowed before him. You know that his mother and father even came. Praise the Lord. You know that the word of God was fulfilled concerning him. Yet he went through these troubles. Yet he went through these situations. I don't know what trouble or situation you are going through. You are not too big for that trouble, though. No. no. God has a purpose, a reason for allowing it in your life. Can I tell you that if you are a child of God, there is nothing that's happening to you that God does not know about. He knows about them all. Hallelujah. Every single one of them. And if it happens to you, it's because he allowed it. It's not because Satan overpowered God concerning you. No. It's because God allowed it. And if he allowed it, there is a reason why he allowed it. Hallelujah. There's a purpose in God for allowing it. And because he has allowed it, you find the purpose in God for allowing that thing. So that that cycle can just end in the name of Jesus Christ. Find the purpose in God. Why has God allowed it? Ask him. Ask him. Ask God. The Bible says, you know, if we seek, we will find. If we knock, it will be opened unto us. He is calling us in this season to find and fulfill our purpose. Amen. I'm excited. I want to fulfill my purpose. You know, you can make it in destiny. You can achieve all God, God's purpose for you. Whatever your situation, wherever you find yourself now, you can achieve all of God's purpose for you. 
if you don't give up, if you don't give in, if you don't get weary, if you're not too big for where God has put you, if you serve God even where he has put you, in that situation that you think is too little for you, is beneath you, you serve God there. Let God lift you up by himself as he always will. Tap into that grace that you need today. Ask God to help you in the name of Jesus. You know, there is a chorus that we sing. I want us to turn it into prayer. I'm done with my preaching. I'm done with my exhortation. I just want you to know that wherever you are today, that's not your destination. Oh. That's not it. Oh. You're not there yet because God is taking you somewhere. The journey may be difficult. The journey may not be as you would have planned it. But the one who made you, the one who has your manufacturer's manual in his hand, he knows how he's going to get you to the expected end that he has planned for you. So don't be weary. Don't push it away. Forbear it. Stand there and see the salvation of the Lord. Because these things that you are seeing today around you, you are going to see them forever again no more in the name of Jesus. Amen. You who are lonely now, you are going to be lifted up. Men will ask you, how did you get here? And the confession you will be able to make, because you cannot do it in your own power, is going to be, it's God, oh. <laughs> it's God, oh, it's God, oh, it's God, oh, it's God, oh. That will be your confession. Because you also know that if it had not been the Lord that had been on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord that had been on our side, then men would have laughed at us. Hallelujah. Then the earth would have covered us. But he has lifted your head. He is lifting your head. Hallelujah. This afternoon, I want you to rise on your feet, beloved. I want you to keep to this purpose-driven life. No man can fulfill purpose without finding it. And if you don't fulfill your purpose, oh my gosh, what are you doing here? Hallelujah. If you don't fulfill the manufacturer's purpose for you, what are you doing here? God has made it an opportunity for us in Harvest Fellowship Church Rugby to go into this study that some man of God, through the divine inspiration of God, has put together so that we also can learn we can find our purpose and fulfill it, amen. So that we are not halflings in destiny. Come on, you are going to need the grace of God for this. You are going to need the help of God. A halfling in destiny can never fulfill, can never be a full grown. Come on, because in destiny they are only half grown. You are not going to be that way in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to lift your, your voice this afternoon. We have a chorus here. It says, give me grace to fall. I don't know how many people are that the chaos are. Give me grace to follow. You need that grace this afternoon. You need it. Choir, please help me. Help me. Help me so that we can pray. One prayer is all I have. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. Come on, let's sing it. Make it a prayer. Make it a prayer.
of your voice in prayer, you say, Father, please release the grace of God upon me. Abundant grace this morning. Oh Lord, don't you be able to understand my purpose and to fulfill it, oh God. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Father, release that grace, oh Lord, Lord upon my life, Father, in this morning. Lord, I ask you for the grace to find your purpose and to fulfill it. Hallelujah. Talk to Almighty God this afternoon. He's the one who enables. He's the one who gives grace. He's the one who gives help that is needed for this journey. Father, your grace, oh God, to find my purpose, your understanding, to find my purpose and to fulfill it. In this season, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that grace that I need to excel, the grace I need to achieve purpose, the grace that I need to fulfill destiny, the grace that I need to make impact, Father, release upon my life in the name of Jesus. Ask God for it, ask God for it. Your life must be an example. The Bible says there will be a difference between those who serve God and those who don't. Your life must be an example. Your life must be different. It is in the hand of God. Pray this afternoon. Let your life depends upon it. The God who hears and answers prayer is right here in our midst. He's listening to you. The grace of God to fulfill purpose, to excel in destiny. Oh God, to achieve my purpose, oh Lord. To fulfill the destiny that you have for me. To make impact for you in my generation. And I'm releasing upon my life. Even this afternoon, in the name of Jesus, you did it for Joseph, Father. I have the example of Joseph. Through all his partitions, through all his troubles, you brought him out. Oh, you caused him to fulfill his purpose in you. Oh, Lord, you lifted him, Father God, because he served you all the way through. Do it in my life, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise, O oh Lord. We bless your holy and mighty name. Thank you, our Father. We give you glory. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want us to pray in tongues just for two minutes. Seal your prayers in tongues this afternoon. Bible says when we pray in tongues, we speak mysteries. Those things that you have forgotten to pray, or the ones that we didn't remember to ask you to pray, let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Concerning your destiny right now. Concerning your fulfilling your own destiny. The call of God for you. The reason why he made you. You are going to find it and you will fulfill it. Sapra ko santa la riaba. Ma santa lisa ga sonda. Ibre go sato ni kama. Na roba shanta la riaba. Na soka tiara bandando. Espro katande re kesendo. Sapra ba 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 bandele. Sapra ko santa la riaba. My life will make a difference in my generation. Ma soka tata ri ba 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 ba. My life will be one that other people are looking to. Oh God. I want you to emulate because of the grace of God upon my life, because of the glory, because of the enablement to accomplish and to fulfill to all of God's purpose for my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name forever. When Jesus mighty name, we have prayed. And so our Heavenly Father, we want to bless you this afternoon. We thank you for speaking your word into our life. We bless you, Father, for the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. We thank you, O Lord God, because our simple hearts have been made enlightened this afternoon. For this we give you praise, O God. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go out of this place, as we continue on this purpose-driven journey, Lord, I'm asking, O God, that by your divine grace, by your help, every one of us, Lord, will find our purpose. Every one of us, will receive the grace and the ability to fulfill it. And Lord, our lives shall have, oh God, impact. Make impact in our generation. Lord, our lives will collide with the lives of others. And there will be a difference in their lives. So it shall be for us. We give you praise. Harvest Fellowship Rugby will make impact in our generation. In our community. We will make a difference. We will be the difference. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. Glory be to you forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before I hand over to Brad Chike. Next week, we're going to be speaking on the topic of, of vision and impact. Of vision and purpose. Of vision and purpose. What vision has to do in the agenda of God's helping us fulfill our purpose? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Over to you, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.